let's first go to videos and let's say your task is uh, classification somebody gives you a video and you want to classify it why is it important it is important because one application is going to be searched the video goes and goes as an input to your network then a class comes out like what action is happening in this video now that you have a text it's going to be very easy to do a search let's say now you want to look for all of the videos that correspond to soccer or basketball then you can do an easy search on your videos the other one is summarization like what is happening in this video what is the what is the video about and then you can get a summary of the video and what is different from a video compared to an image you can treat a video as a bag of short clips and then each clip is going to have a bunch of consecutive frames so it's going to be a bunch of consecutive images so that's the type of data that you're going to work with this paper is going to introduce a new data set that sports 1 million data and these videos you're going to fetch them actually they fetch them from youtube it's 1 million youtube, youtube videos and we know that each youtube video is going to have its own caption you do some claim, cleaning of the data to come up with 487 classes of the types of sports that these videos are going to correspond to okay creating a data set is tough and that's one data set sports 1 million then the network that you're going to work with is going to have two streams one is a context stream so don't worry i'm going to go through what is a context stream and what is a fovea stream but the idea is that the context stream is going to look at low resolution frames and the fovea stream is going to look at high resolution middle portion of a frame i'm going to go through the details so don't worry about it it's just to give you the big picture and then we do some transfer learning so you, you train your network on sports 1 million data set and then you do your transfer learning and then you apply this is a classical uh, action recognition data set for videos ucf 101 and 101 stands for you have 101 classes but it has a smaller size compared to a 1 million data set for the sports okay so some transfer learning is going to happen here as well and what is a video you're going to treat every video i don't know it's going to be a five minute video on youtube and then you're going to treat that as a bag of shorter and fixed size clips if you have a classifier that's able to classify your clips then classifying the video is going to be easy why because you have a bag of predictions and then those predictions are going to vote for instance you can do an average of the probabilities and then you can get the prediction for the entire video and each clip is going to contain several contiguous frames in time so it's going to be a spatial temporal time series the space is the space are the images are the frames and these are going to be in time you have a bunch of frames in time so one idea for doing a classification on a video is to look at only one frame only a single frame in your clip and then uh, apply your usual convolutional network and then do your prediction so forget about the rest of the, forget about the time just look at one image one frame and then do your cnn on that and the red uh, box here corresponds to a convolution this is going to be a normalization layer and then you have a pooling layer so the blue one is pooling the green one is normalization and then you have convolution so that's going to be a baseline you can have three other methods and i'm going to go through the details of each one one after another so it's not that hard but let's see what happens for a single frame you take a single frame it's going to be 170 by 170 by three color channels you push that through your convolutional network. I'm gonna tell you what it is, what this is. So C is a convolution. The first number that you see is gonna be the number of filters that you have. 11 is gonna be your filter size. It's gonna be 11 by 11. And three is a stride. So you take your image, push it through a convolution. And this operation here, think of it as a pipe operation. So first you do convolution, then you do your normalization. Then you do your pooling. This is exactly what happened up until this point. Then you have another convolution with this many filters, this filter size, that is right. So that's going to be your entire network. In the end, you have a fully connected layer. That's this yellow 
bikes and now they're fully connected and then you do your prediction the next one is going to be 487 classes or 101 classes so up until this point is the part that you're going to transfer the last layer is the head of your network depending on your data set okay that's a single frame so far so good and the p operation that you see is two by two non-overlapping pooling by non-overlapping you mean that the stride is two and we covered local response normalization it was the first one of the first ideas that we covered actually you don't even need that this could be a batch normalization layer but we know what is a local response normalization the idea was used in AlexNet paper and that's our single frame for early fusion this network your first layer is going to be a convolution and each kernel is going to have this size it's going to be 11 by 11 by 3 because you have three input channels and then you just add the time dimension okay these are each one of your filters and then you're going to have i don't know 96 filters and we know that a filter does a very simple operation you take your filter you multiply it by the corresponding uh, frames and pixels in your image and then you just add them up that's just what a convolution is it's very simple you take your it's a dot product of your filter and the corresponding small window in your image and that's the window that we're going to use in the time there is no sliding happening in time but there is sliding of your window in space okay there is an 11 by 11 sliding that's happening on your image but you always have these t consecutive uh, frames that are going through your network going into your network is, is this just like a three-dimensional convolution essentially where that extra dimension is our multiple frames it's a slightly different from 3d convolutions why because this last dimension is space so you are not sliding this over your time okay so you take one slice from uh, this time to the next time you have t frames and these are always fixed so you don't slide it from left to right yeah okay that makes sense. so yes it's very similar to 3d convolutions but in time you're not sliding it's always your input that's early fusion and the rest of it once you fuse you're going to end up with 96 dimensions that you can put through the next layers so the rest of it is the same only your the first layer changes that's why it's early late fusion you're going to put one network in the beginning one network at the end it's the same network and then in the end you're just going to concatenate them and push them through your fully connected network and up until this point is uh, the same network as the single frame network and this is where you're going to cut and then concatenate so this is the layer that you're going to cut c25631 c25631 and the slow fusion is just a com combination of these two you can have one two three four frames then you're gonna have a convolution filter similar to what you have for early fusion and then you can have multiple of them and then you combine and in the end you do your fully connected kind of okay so far so good now it's time for these two concepts context stream and fovea stream for the context stream you're gonna take your entire image and down sample it to 89 by 89 resolution so the context stream is looking at the entire image and the center crop is just a high resolution crop from the center of your image so this one is going to preserve the resolution it's going to look at the fine details in space this one is going to look at the entire picture this one is going to see the context this one is going to see the details and then you're going to have two streams one is looking at your context sorry this is looking at the context this is the entire image and the other one is looking at the center crop so what happens in terms of accuracy the single frame with multi-resolution this is multi-resolution is actually doing very good in 42.4 accurate when you consider only one image and if you are happy with five images and then your prediction being included in those five images then it's going to be 78 this is for a clip this is for the entire video and the video is a bag of clips so you do that for multiple clips and then you just vote so taking into account the video is helping and then apparently among early fusion late fusion and slow fusion slow fusion is doing the best and it's not decisive which one of these two we're gonna 
choose if you are interested in clip then the single frame of the resolution is doing the best but then if you're interested in the entire video this one is doing the best and why is time why time matters let's look at this video the true underlying class is juggling club the single frame predictions are acrobatic being a swan we slide i don't even know what that means and then unicycle but then when you include the video and make it motion aware basically include time then it's going to be able to classify correctly okay perfect any questions so in the next session we're going to continue with videos for a while and then uh, think monday next week or friday this week we are going to start with 3d data because the world around us is 3d it's not always about cameras, images, videos. You can have different types of instruments collecting data around us, like LiDAR data, and that's gonna give you point cloud data. And then we should be able to work with that as well. I think we are finishing right on time. If there are any questions, you are more than welcome to stay and ask. I'll be around. And the ones who want to leave, you can leave. I, I was just curious if we were gonna talk about in this um, sort of next bit with video or with 3D data, if we were going to talk about uh, like recurrent networks, using recurrent networks um, for uh, classification and such? Uh, yes, at least in one of the papers, we're going to okay. talk about recurrent networks. But recurrent networks, they have applications, mostly in natural language processing, and they are actually getting outdated these days. The most application of them that I saw is in speech, speech oh, recording. And really that's not, really, sorry, go ahead. That's going to be next semester. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a lot of LSTMs, recurrent neural networks, next semester. Do you, is there a reason you don't see them as much? I mean, because I would imagine that, I mean, taking advantage of the like to, temporal dependence in video with recurrent networks would be really helpful. And that's sort of, yeah. is that, that's is that uh, sorry. <laughs> one uh, problem with recurrent neural networks is that they are not GPU friendly. So it's not easy to parallelize them, it's a sequential process. I think that's why these days people are, people are moving towards attention networks and transformers. Mm -hmm. and because those types of networks, you can do operations in parallel. They're GPU friendly. Mm -hmm. But mathematically, there is nothing wrong with them. Mm -hmm. They are powerful. They have a hidden dimension that's accumulating observations in time. So that's really powerful. And I don't see any reason for not using that. Besides trainability, essentially besides being fast yeah okay thanks yeah uh I have a, are we gonna cover any um any networks that use complex value data uh no but okay. that's also really important because if you think about who yeah you're gonna easily yes. end up with complex values yeah right? yeah exactly so they're important is there is there a good paper to go to for a reference on that no I don't know on top of my head. I remember a couple of years ago, I saw some networks doing that. Okay, certainly not urgent. I'm just interested. No, that's really important. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah.